Hey guys, what's up? About two months ago, I shared with you a video on how I invest in the US stock market by investing in equity funds run by local Philippine banks. Now, while I continue to recommend this investing method, I actually got a handful of comments on my video asking me about my opinion on investing by the eToro trading platform. And the truth was, I didn't have a strong opinion because I wasn't even on the eToro trading platform. So since I consider myself also as a beginner, decided to do some research and sign up on eToro. But it's been a few weeks now that I've been on eToro. It's really exciting, hope to gain more profits from it soon. And I'm glad that I took everyone's advice to try it out. But as a beginner, I wanted to share here with you the five dangerous things that you can do on eToro as a beginner. Number one, funding your eToro wallet with your credit card. Aside from mutual funds and UITFs, I've actually gotten to use BDO Securities and BPI Trade. And with these local trading platforms, you always have to deposit your hard-earned money through your account. Nothing more, nothing less. So it was a big surprise for me to see that in eToro, I can fund my wallet through my credit card. So it was as easy as online shopping. And while this is ultimately convenient, the obvious danger there would be using too much of your credit for your investments. If you pay your credit card on time, technically, you've made money without ever even shelling out. Since this is a high-risk investment, I really would advise against it. I guess the cardinal rule with credit card supply, don't put on credit what you can't immediately pay for and make sure that what you're using on eToro is money that you already have. Just use the credit card for your convenience. Number two, investing in cool stocks. From investing locally, let's say you're investing in pure gold, frutas. So you're investing in these local brands and then now with, with eToro, you're now able to invest in things like Tesla, Facebook, Amazon. I mean, we're all fans, we're all users. Well, I hope I had a Tesla. There's a bit of an emotional or sentimentality that goes into it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I guess what I'm just trying to say is, if you're going to be investing in these stocks, please still do your homework about when would be the right entry point, if it's a good time to enter the market as a whole. Because it's easy to get blinded with these big names without factoring in if the stock is indeed a good buy right now or should we hold out for a lower price. <laughs> Number three, continuing the cool factor. With eToro, you can also invest in commodities such as gold, oil, silver. And I find that amusing because while I see these commodities being sold in the news, I never really understood how I could buy it myself. Again, there's nothing wrong with investing in gold, oil. But where it gets tricky is that in eToro, you can actually buy these commodities even when you don't have on hand the full amount. What I'm trying to say here is that you can purchase gold even if you don't have the minimum amount to buy it with. And this is through their leverage platform. The leverage feature on eToro basically means that eToro is helping you to buy gold by lending you a bit of that money. And the money lent to you does not come in the form of interest such as bank. So it's, it's a whole way of lending altogether. And that sounds like a great thing. But with leveraging, your seed money can appreciate much faster. But your seed money also can depreciate just as fast. So it's a high stakes game. If you don't know what you're doing, I suggest you stay away from the leveraging feature. If you do want to buy commodities such as gold and silver, buy them without any leverage and stick to the X1 buying option because this means you're not putting on any additional unnecessary risk because you're only invested in it with your money. You're not looking at the strain that the leveraging feature puts on you as an investor. Number four, short selling. I'm a big fan of TV series such as Billions or movies such as Wolf of Wall Street. In the 90s, there's Boiler Room. And you hear this term a lot, shorting. So it's something that I only hear in movies or in the news, but it's not something that we're able to do locally with our Philippine stocks. But with eToro, since you're looking at international stocks, you can actually do short selling. And simply put, short selling is betting that your position for a stock or a commodity will go down and you make money by predicting that that stock or commodity is about to go down. And it sounds pretty simple. It seems like you're just betting against the market, but the thing with short selling is you're going to have to use the leveraging feature also. 
So again, this puts unnecessary strain on your capital. So if you could avoid it, maybe just don't do short selling while you're new to eToro. Or if you must, make sure that you properly define your stop loss at a level that would be acceptable to you. Because again, with leverage, your losses actually snowball quite quickly. If you can't stomach those kind of losses, define your stop loss at an acceptable level. And lastly, number five, eToro, just like any app, actually alerts you pretty often. So if you're used to mutual funds or UITFs or even online trading platforms where you just leave the money there and you just sort of forget about it, the thing with eToro is that it will continue to alert you whether you're making great gains or maybe if you're in the red. I think the danger with all these notifications from eToro would be your paranoia, your peace of mind. If you're investing in stocks for the long term and the daily fluctuations don't matter to you, I would suggest don't log into the eToro platform too much or don't install the app altogether or turn off the notification. This would affect your psyche seeing the fluctuations. Then turn these off because I want you to have your peace of mind. So that's about it guys. I call these things the 5 dangerous things to watch out for in eToro. But actually, all of it can be avoided if you're just more careful and more prudent in using the platform, especially as a beginner. Give yourself the patience and the time to learn. And this video wasn't made to discourage you from joining eToro. In fact, these are tips to help you get on eToro, hopefully help you mitigate your risks. If there are things that you would like to suggest to me, like last time I got my motivation to sign up with eToro because of your comment, please include it in the comment section. And thanks again for watching guys. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time.